Hey everyone, how are your lives treating you? It's Eric Lee here coming at you once again with another episode of EML 77 TV, episode 259. What's going on? Really excited about the summer coming up. As you know, a lot of things are happening tomorrow. Super Showdown. It's going to be great. I Speaking of Super Showdown, there will be a kickoff matchup. It will be um, the Usos taking on the Revival. So who am I picking in that matchup? It will be the Usos. Also... As the plane touched down in Jeddah, Jed Saudi Arabia, according to WWE Twitter account, we have a new 24-7 champion, and that is Jinder Mahal. He pinned our truth getting off the plane. That was really funny. So it was great. It was great to see. But however, let's talk about the main thing going on right now. And you know what I'm wondering? What am I doing in the Google, Google, my Google Photos, Photos album? Did I get that? Or I'm trying to talk so fast. As you know, I'm a... I'm also like in game shows. You see some me playing some um, playing some game shows on my YouTube channels, of uh, my TPL channel and this channel here. So, because of pressure luck is coming back this Tuesday, a sneak preview at ten o'clock. That means I'll be watching it on my high def TV while I'm watching Duel Five live here. So when SmackDown's over, change it to ABC because it is time for a little bit of pressure luck. So, what I'm thinking. What 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 can I do to uh to commemorate this? I'm gonna talk about game show villains, the villains that makes a contestant think about his or her strategy. What what can he or she do? Makes it give they make a contestant really think real hard about what they, what they're doing and how many chances they're taking here. <laughs> you know we've seen bankrupt symbols like the bankrupt wedge and wheel of fortune, the stop sign and bumper stumpers. But how do how, how how did the the concept of having a game show villain exist? You got to dart back to the '60s on a game show called Beat the Odds. This dude right here is Sammy the Whammy. Let's show him. There he is, Sammy the Whammy. It's supposed to be a ghost. It looks like a bank robber, if you ask me. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that 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 type of deal. In Beat the Odds, the goal here is to make words. From four, five, six letters in the alphabet, but un, it's it's spun at random. But if Sammy the Whammy shows up, you lose your prize. In the bonus game, he acts differently. He gives you some money back. What a nice guy, right? But how? But then, but then in the seventies, though, it was replaced by this bolt of lightning called the Whammy, <laughs> and the other bolts of lightning, well. I'll get to more on that in just a moment. So, so that bolt of lightning right here, that bolt of lightning. So, that's your whammy in the seventies, believe it or not. Okay, M more on whammy sooner or later. Now, we're gonna dart to nineteen seventy-two. Jack Barry decided to make a comeback after the game show scandals that happened, quiz show scandal that happened in the fifties. And hosting a game show called The Joker's Wild. Now, the goal here is to answer trivia questions to win money. You win $500 or more, you go play a bonus round. In the original bonus round, you play for prizes, of course. And if you spend three prizes with circles, you win a big grand prize, a brand new car. But that is replaced with a second bonus round called Jokers and Devils, where if you spend three Jokers, you win a prize. But spend this guy right here where my cursor is at. This devil right here, you lose. You lose it all. And then, during the the final run of the CBS run, and in the syndicated version, there's called Beat the Devil. Get to a thousand dollars or more without seeing this guy, you win. But this guy shows up, you lose. But if you get a natural triple, this is during the syndicated version, I believe. If you get like three twenty fives, three fifties, three seventy fives. You defeat the devil automatically, and you win the prize package and the $1,000. Again, he comes up, you lose. Even audience members try to get a crack at him. Sometimes they win, sometimes they'll lose. The show has been revived, though, in 2017, hosted by Snoop, Snoop Dogg. And this is the devil here. That's right, the mean old devil here. Looks scary and unusual, and he has an evil laugh. Difference is... There's no natural triple bonus, but you get three jokers as an instant jackpot, either at fifty thousand dollars. In the first season, it was twenty-five. 
get to ten thousand dollars more. That's the goal. But the devil shows up. He's always on the last wheel. You lose it all. But sometimes Snoop Dogg will offer you money to stop. And once you do that, if you stop and take the money, you don't have to worry about this this idiot. Now let's talk about the other creepy idiot on the left on another game show. He's not for the Joker's Wild, but I put devils together because that's what the devil looks like in game shows. However, this devil here was from another game show as a precursor to one of the most popular 80s game shows. You've heard of Press Your Luck, right? This devil came from Second Chance. That's right. Second Chance is like Press Your Luck. The difference is the board doesn't shuffle the pictures or the slides. It just has the lights. When the lights are spinning, the lights are faster. The goal, it's like press your luck. The only difference is you don't buzz in for an answer. For three spins. If you get the answer correctly the first time around, you get two spins. But there's a second chance answer. That means if you are if you get called out for an incorrect answer, you have an op- the host will give you the opportunity. The host will be Jim Beck. Will give you the opportunity to change your answer. That's your second chance. And you receive one spin if you get it right. You go to the board. The devil operates just like Our little other friend in the 80s. I'll get to more on that guy when we get when we come to it. All you gotta do is get caches and get get cash and prizes. And if you hit this guy, this creepy dude that looks like a mime, a creepy mime clown with jazz hands and a tuxedo. Yeah, that's creepy. (laughs) Um it's funny. The jazz hands, I decided to do that pretty funny. Um it's like he's got jazz hands. Jazz hands. I'm the devil with jazz hands. I look fabulous. <laughs> uh, I don't know what, the, what sometimes some people are thinking back then when they created this little, okay, this dude right here. You get him, you lose. And you get four of these devils, you out. Simple as that. <laughs> yep. He seems happy here. Not these two guys. They must look at him going, dude, seriously, you're supposed to look mean. You know what I'm saying? It's too funny. All right, then second chance happened to premiere on the year of my birthday. You know, my birth, I should say, 1977. Speaking of 1977, another game show with a villain that appeared Tic Tac Doe. Simple enough, it's a simple quiz show. You answer questions correctly, you get you see, um, you receive an X or an O on the board. You get three X's or O's in a row, you win, and you get to play a bonus round. And in the bonus game, in the pilot version on CBS, your goal is to find a Tic Tac Doe. Well, either the X or O. Either way. Every X and O you uncover, you get $150. If you get three X's or three O's, you find the tic-tac-doe, the one tic-tac-doe on the board, you win $1,000 in the prize package. But this guy right here, that's the dragon. And I don't mean Ricky Steamboat or Bruce Lee. He may be a green monster, and I don't mean the wall at Fenway Park. That's the dragon. He comes up, and he comes up you lose. But then in the syndicated version, once again, like the Joker's Wild, they changed the bonus round rules. The goal is to get to $1,000 or more. You do that without seeing the dragon, you win. There's, But there's other way. There's another way you can win. Get two cards called Tick and Tack. You get those, you win automatically. But if you get this guy, you lose. The show was revived in 1990, though, by host Patrick Wayne. And this scary-looking guy... It's also the dragon. And the bonus round works like the CBS version. But you get to choose which symbol you can try and make ticker, um, tic-tac-doe with X or O. Every time you hit an X up there, with your, if your symbol hits, you get $500 for each symbol you've hit. Get a tic-tac-doe. You win the mu- you win the $1,000. That doubles it up to $2,000. You win the prize package. But if all... Uh, it's not a hoax. It's not a joke. If you fit the dragon, you'll be broke. That's right. The stinking dragon raps. And he ain't Snoop Dogg for any of that matter. You get him, that's right. You lose. Simple as that. Simple as that. But there's a butt to the butt, as Patrick Wayne would say. There's a dragon slayer on the board. It works like the tick and tack. You get him, you win everything. Trust me. Sometimes you don't have a tick and you don't have a tick tack deal. You're like, crap. How do I win? Simple. The Dragon Slayer saves your butt. Simple as that. But the Dragon here, well, he loses it all. And we're focusing on dr- game show villains, not game show heroes. And I think the Dragon Slayer is the only game show hero that I can think of. So, um, But, like I said, 
dragon shows up here, you lose everything. That dragon's less scary than the other dragon. But you know what? Either way, they play a huge part. Now, we're still stuck in the 70s. The, um, the next group of villains is different. The game show, whoosh, what a name, huh? It's named after a sound effect. Whoosh, all right? And these are your gauntlet of villains. Your goal here is to charge and block and correct a blooper. You get it right, you get money. Now, whatever money you win, each... Each $100 is a second to add to your original 60 seconds. Let's say for charging and blocking, you get $1,500. You get a chance to add 15 seconds on the clock, and you get 75 seconds to beat these 10 villains. That's right. Their goal is to block to stop you from winning $25,000. If you Now, in CBS rules, if you win $25,000, you retire automatically. Now, check this out. We're going to run down the villains' names for you. There's your gauntlet of the villains. Your logo. Number one, villain number one is Alphonse the Gangster. He looks like one of those gangsters from the Looney Tunes characters. Rocky Shrine now. Shane, Shane, Rocky Shrine now. Shane, 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 Shane. Rocky Shrine now. Shane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it reminds me of that. That's Alphonse the Gangster. All right. Um, villain number two. Bruno the Headsman. Well, it should be Bruno the Executioner. But Bruno the Headsman, he chops people's heads off. Villain number three is your typical villain. Like you see, you know, tries to tie a poor girl on the train track and the hero comes to save her. Looks like that. But that's Mr. Van Laus, the landlord. Villain number four, Nero the Fiddler. And uh, Villain number five, Count Nibbleneck the Vampire. Excuse me one second. All right. Count the Molecta Vampire is villain number five. Villain number six, Frank and his little friend Stein. You don't see Stein, but there's Frank. <laughs> Frankenstein, huh? Villain number seven here, Kid Rotten the Gunslinger. Villain number eight, Jeremy Schwash the Pirate. What a name, Jeremy Schwash. Call him Peg, call him Peg Lake Pete or something like that. You know? Villain number nine, Dr. Deranged, the mad scientist. And the only female villain, Lucretia the Witch at number 10. The goal here is to get all by these 10 villains. You do that in under the allotted time that you've been given. You win $25,000, you get to retire. And you don't have to worry about these clowns anymore. You know, Tom Kennedy should introduce these guys as 10 of the most, let's say, of zealous xenophobes or black-hearted brigands, or I call them the bunch of jabronis or the stupid idiots that are going to make the list of Jericho. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I want to announce them as. But you know what? You get by these ten, you get these by these ten uh, villains here. You win twenty-five grand. Right? And if you don't, they'll yell times. Ah! You know, Rocky's man now, Shane. Shane, Rocky's man now, Shane. Shut up, Alphonse. Your name's not Rocky. They should call him Rocky. Rocky's my now, Shane. Yeah, yeah. Where's that rabbit? Where's that rabbit? <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with this one. All right. Now we go into the 80s. Let's bring these bad boys back up. Now, you know, we've heard about the beats the odds whammy lightning here. But what are the three lightning bolts? They're, the game, they're from a game show that I liked watching when I was a kid growing up. It was a game show of strategy, luck, knowledge, and daring. It was Bullseye, hosted by Jim Lang. Now, here's the ultimate goal here. You answer questions, and you get money for them. Get $2,000 or more, you win, you play the bonus round. In the pilot version, you have an opportunity to win up to $1 million. Bullseye became the first sh game show to try to give away $1 million, even in, pilot version, in, even in the pilot version. Now, in the pilot version... The game, the bonus round works like Jokers and Devils, Bullseyes and Lightning Bolts. You see there's two different versions of the Lightning Bolts in the pilot version. This is the very skinny Lightning Bolt, and this is the very fat one here. I'll deal with this guy sooner or later. You, you have a number jumbler, three, four, five, and a Bullseye. If you spend, like I say, if you, see, you see me play these games. 
You spend three bullets, you spend you get three spins worth without seeing the lightning, you get eight thousand dollars. Four spins without seeing the lightning, you get sixteen thousand. Five spins without seeing the lightning, you get thirty-two thousand. If you go, you hit the bullseye and go all the way. I think it takes ten spins to do so without being struck by lightning, you get one million dollars. But all that was scrapped for the syndicated version. You add the, the bullseyes stay in. But the lightning decided to go down just to one window. This is the lightning bolt here, which is just right. And you also got money amounts. All you got to do is get three bullseyes. And whatever money you accumulate in the pot, you can bank at any time. Because if this guy show, if this lightning bolt shows up right here, you'll lose everything. But the bullseyes can be your best friends. You can freeze the bullseyes and prevent this dude from showing up. But you never know. Lightning could be in the one window you have open. Or two of the one, or one of the two windows you still have open. All you do is get three bullseyes, you win. But if you go ten spins without seeing this this guy here, you win five thousand dollars in the prizes. Simple as that. That's now for the coup de gras. Actually, we're not done yet. I'll get to these guys. That'll be the best for last. In 1987. But former Major League catcher Joe Gargiola hosted the game show called Strike It Rich. The goal here is to win money, win prizes. But you got to watch out for this dude, the Bandit. His laugh is voiced by Boo Powell, who was the former first baseman for the Baltimore Orioles. And I heard he's, a, I heard he's got his own, own barbecue grill up there in Camden Yards. Might I digress? The guy's a power hitter, by the way. But this Bandit here... You get him, he looks like Fred Flintstone in disguise with no hair. <laughs> Barney, my money. <laughs> Anyways, hey, 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 Barn. <laughs> Anyways, he comes up and any of the arches, you lose your prizes. If you bank your prizes beforehand, you're good. You got those prizes, and you're like, ah, forget it. But he also plays a role in the bonus round. If you get a chance to, um, you have a choice to go $5 signs for $5,000. And if you hit three bandits, game's over. However, if you go for six dollar signs, five thousand dollars and the car. If you hit two bandits, you're through. Simple enough. There's your bandit. Now for the coup de gras of all game show villains. As you know, this coming Tuesday, Pressure Luck is coming back. The series premiere starts Wednesday, but they decided to get but ABC is generous enough to give us a, a sneak premiere. An early premiere, per se. In 1983, Peter Tamarkin, after you know ending his run with Hitman along with Rod Rod, Rod Roddy, decided well, they're going to host another game show offered by Bill Carruthers. It was pressure luck and included these guys here. Well, actually, it started with this dude right here, the Whammy. The actual whammy. Not Sammy the whammy or the lightning bolt whammy from Beat the Odds. This whammy. That's right. This bad boy here. It's like second. Remember. Second Chance was the precursor for this show. And replaced the devil with a evil ugly ogre. Cartoon o goofy cartoon ogre. Who's way of catching money. Sort of Wiley Coyote-ish. You know. Let's just say they're trying to make the whammy look like a little bit like Wiley Coyote almost. The only difference is he actually gets the money. The money ain't the roadrunner, that's for sure. Now all you gotta do is like you answer questions. Buzz the correct buzz and answer or three spins, multiple choice answer, one spin. You take the spins to the board, get cash and prizes. But hit him on the game board with along with the other poses that he does. This is the this is hey ladies, how you doing pose? The hey ladies way me I like to call him. All you gotta do is avoid avoid him and you win. You hit him, he'll lose all, you'll lose all your money, all your swag. However, four of them will knock you out of the game. But in like mid-1984, 85, there's $2,000 or lose one whammy. That plays a huge role. If you choose hit that space, you can choose to lose this goofball. Goofball alien from outer space. But however, only one guy was able to conquer him. Despite hitting him on the first spin. One dude, because he figured out how the Game Boy works. The Game Boy. The Game Board. 
the Game Boy. Yeah, play it on the Game Boy. I got it from the DS. <laughs> this game here. Uh, Michael Larson, former ice, an unemployed ice cream truck driver, figured out where the whammy is not and used his know-how from taping shows to get it done. So, this whammy, well, he was not happy. Figured how you get revenge, but unfortunately, he won't get his revenge on Michael Larson. Because he passed away in 1999. After, four years after Michael Larson passed away, folks at GSN said, let's revive Press Your Luck. Make it different this time. And no. Decided to have Whammy the old new Pressure Luck, and there's the the Whammy from 2003. Todd Newton hosts the show. The Whammy, same thing, same. But the only difference is, in the first round, spin round, you take one spin each. You hit a Whammy, you're out of the first round. But more Whammies get added to the game board to make things interesting and or difficult. In the second round, you got double whammies. You hit one of them, not only you just lose, they steal your money, but they decide to mess with you while doing it. Whether it is mowing grass and dumping it on top of your head, dumping clothes on top of your head, squirting you with water, hitting you with basketballs or ping pong balls, a la Captain Kangaroo, or Basically, they can insult you and get angry with you like you're Ozzy, they're Ozzy Osbourne. Well, please, fabulous. You know? The whammies, these whammies were merciless. And then, the show went off the air on GSN. But, however, this Tuesday and Wednesday, it's coming back, hosted by the actress who played Rita Repulsa in the 2017 Power Rangers movie, Elizabeth Banks. And if anybody can wrangle up these dudes... Is none other than Rita herself. That's right. And this is the whammy from 2009. So similar to the one in the 80s. One in the 80s. Same precursor. Just like the 80s. But there's a new bonus round. Where you can play against the whammy himself. And try to take a, try to t- walk out. With one million dollars. Imagine that. You're going up against a whammy. One million dollars. So. The bonus round works like um, if two players whammy out and you're the only one left. Remember those days? And basically playing against the house. So, this Tuesday, I can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, that. These are your game show villains. The Gauntlet of Villains. And there's your whammies from the 80s version of Press Your Luck. Funny part is, the first four whammy slides you see here at the top here were an animation for the hammer whammy. The other one, the Hey Ladies whammy. And there's your four new whammy, five new whammies that debuted in August of 84. You gotta love it. There's the Devils from the Joker's Wild, the Devil from Second Chance, the whammies from Press Your Luck, the Dragons from Tic Tac Doe. The Lightning Bolt Whammy and Sammy the Whammy from Beat the Odds. The bolt of, Bolts of Lightning from Bullseye and the Bandit from Strike It Rich. These are your game show villains. There are other game show villains like the monster from Wheel of Fortune, the kids version. Um, you get the bankrupt symbol and the lose a turn symbols. You get the stop from Wheel of Fortune as well. You get the stop symbol from Bumper Stumpers. The stop sign. And you got the blank card from the 70s version of Break the, Break the Bank as well. It's all sorts, all these villains make game shows fun. And with the return of Plus Your Luck, these nefarious little creatures right here, they're to come back, cause mischief and trouble by anybody that gets too greedy. I'm looking forward to Plus Your Luck. Hope you are too. That's all the time we have on the show. Um, God's blessings, love, and life, and light to all of you. Catch you on the flip side. Remember, pay attention. You might learn something. Press your luck. It's coming. It's coming back. On ABC. 11. and It's on at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Check your local listings for time and date and all that. 
series premiere the next day, June the 12th, 8 o'clock. Can't wait for it. Hope to watch it. Hope I be there to watch it. So I'll see you guys later, and um, you have a good day. And uh, episode 259, Game Show Villains, complete.